Best of the Web columnist James Toronto. Welcome, James. Thanks. Good to be here. To talk about President Obama and uh, the First Amendment. Let's put it that way. So, James, the same President Obama who a couple years ago was uh, using his State of the Union address to lecture the Supreme Court on a campaign finance decision uh, that helped uh, create the super PACs that we see today. Um, is now embracing them? Right. First of all, we shouldn't call it a campaign finance decision. We should call it a free speech decision. Okay. It was a decision that said that just because people organize themselves as corporations doesn't mean they give up their right to free speech. Okay. Uh, yes, fast forward, uh, Mitt Romney and the other Republicans have been making, uh, or people who support them have been making extensive use of these super PACs, these outside organizations that are not supposed to coordinate with campaigns. campaigns right. So Obama, who had been against them, flip-flops, and now he's encouraging people to donate to them, although he has to be careful not to violate the ban on coordination. Okay, now um, his campaign manager, Jim Messina, last night released uh, an email, or, or put this in a blog post, and it said, quote, with so much at stake, we can't allow for two sets of rules in this election, whereby the Republican nominee is the beneficiary of unlimited spending and Democrats unilaterally disarm. That's their argument for embracing super PACs. Well, the best thing about that email was mm -hmm. this is the email that goes out to these people that they, you know, beg incessantly mm -hmm. for $3 donations. They say, we're doing this for you. We're doing this to make sure that your little donations make a difference. Mm -hmm. The argument about not unilaterally disarming taken in itself and applied to this case in isolation, I think is a perfectly reasonable argument. They didn't make the rules. Uh, there's no reason to say that they should have to follow the rules that they would like if the other side isn't going to follow them. On the other hand, in 2008, Barack Obama became the first candidate uh, since the institution of federal matching funds mm -hmm. to decline to take federal matching right. funds. The reason he did that was because that means there are no limits on the amount of money he can raise. Mm -hmm. So he vastly outraised John McCain, who really does believe in this campaign finance nonsense, <laughs> and who took federal matching funds and was not able to raise anywhere near as much money as, as Obama did. So. When they say uh, they're not going to play by two sets of rules, well, they're not going to play by two sets of rules unless it's their, to their advantage to play by two sets of rules, as it was in 2008. So I congratulate them for embracing free speech, but I also think they're a bunch of hypocrites. I mean, and and many people on the left um, are, are, are using the same argument. There's a, 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 a group recently out in San Francisco began a super PAC, uh, citing. Uh, that it does not like super PACs, but feels compelled to play this game. So it's. Um, well, I guess what I we love is the left's uh, interest in, in, in the First Amendment. What I love is Common Cause, which is you yeah. know they pose as good government guys, but uh -huh. they're really a nasty left wing group. But they're the biggest opponents of of, uh -huh. uh, of free free political speech. Uh, they you know hold these rallies against uh -huh. Citizens United, uh, where at one about a year ago people were talking about lynching Supreme Court justices and stuff. I mean it was uh -huh. nuts. Yeah. But you, you look carefully on their website. You have to really seek out this information. What kind of organization is Common Cause? Well, they're what's called a 501c4. Okay. That's exactly the kind of organization Citizens United was, a nonprofit organization which, uh, which is not exempt. Donors are not exempt from taxes, mm -hmm. and they're allowed to engage in political speech. Yeah. So they, they are the very sort of organization they think should not have yeah. uh, freedom of speech. I call them self-hating super PACs. Yeah. Uh, I think that's what I... What I've called them in print. Um, also, want to ask you about some news that just broke today. Um, a two-to-one ruling uh, uh, out in, in, in San Francisco in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals said that uh, California's Proposition 8, which is the ban on gay marriage, was unconstitutional. Your reaction? Well, the important thing to keep mm -hmm. in mind about this ruling is they did not say there is a constitutional right to same-sex marriage. Okay. What they did was more clever than that. What they said was that this proposition uh, takes a previ -exist previously existing right that had been imposed by the California Supreme mm -hmm. Court, takes it away from a particular class of people, mm -hmm. gays or same-sex couples, however you want to define mm -hmm. that class, in contravention of a 1996 Supreme Court ruling called Romer versus Evans, which okay. involved an initiative in Colorado that banned uh, uh, discrimination laws protecting homosexuals. Okay. Well, guess who wrote that ruling? <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to guess. Justice Kennedy. <laughs> this was a decision that was meant to ease the way for Justice Kennedy. What Justice Justice Kennedy okay. can now do when this comes to the Supreme Court is he can rule, and in fact it's easier for him to rule. The logic of this, uh, of this decision 
makes perfect sense if you start with the 1996 case. He can rule. This proposition is struck down. California has same-sex marriage, but he doesn't need to take the big leap of saying same-sex marriage is the law of the land in all 50 states. So this is a uh, Ninth Circuit ruling tailor-made for the swing vote on the Supreme Court. Yes, and very well crafted, in my opinion, to uh, to win and, that and swing that vote. And that could be the next step for this. It could go to, a, I believe, an 11-member panel. That's right. They call uh, that on Bach. Uh, or it could go straight or to, it the straight three, to the Supreme to Court. The yeah, it'll Supreme reach the Court. Supreme Court sometime in the next couple of years. Now. Um, this could renew a debate about activist judges. It's something that Newt Gingrich, among others, has been running on, and uh, perhaps give his campaign a boost in February when he isn't expected to do very well. Maybe, although I have to say, Gingrich kind of blew it on the activist judges thing when he uh, commented uh, a couple of months ago that he wanted to uh, haul judges before Congress and have them testify, which was a really, first of all, it was a really out there idea. Second, yeah. he's running for president. The president has no authority to hold congressional hearings. It was yeah. just, it was just a bizarre uh, statement. And so, given Newt's uh, propensity for, uh, saying things that are a little out there. Uh, it'll be well, interesting to see if he can yeah. handle this in a more I, I reasonable way. I think it is way. a subject, though, that, that resonates with the base of the Republican Party. So I, I would expect him to talk about it on the campaign trail. Is this a subject, though, that the White House wants to be discussing in the run-up to the election? No, of course not. I mean, look, Obama is formally opposed to same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. He says his views are evolving. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, the tacit understanding is that he actually supports it, but has to say he's opposed for political reasons. Okay. Uh, remember, this is an, a ballot measure that was approved in California right. in 2008, as Obama mm -hmm. was sweeping to victory, and he mm -hmm. won with, I believe, over 60% of the vote in California. Mm -hmm. uh, so same-sex marriage is a lot less popular than Obama was then, and I venture to say, even than Obama is today, notwithstanding that his popularity has gone down and same-sex marriage's popularity has gone up. So no, I think he would uh, much rather stay out, stay out of this. Um, quickly, we have about 30 seconds. Um, we have a few contests today, Missouri, Minnesota, Colorado. Romney has begun attacking Rick Santorum in earnest in recent days. Um, does he have reason to be worried, James? Has Rick Santorum's campaign got some legs? Well, Santorum is up in the polls in Minnesota by a significant margin. So he could actually win the caucus in Minnesota, which uh, none, none of the contests today allocated any delegates. But right. Minnesota is a state similar to Iowa, a liberal-leaning state with a very conservative, social conservative Republican Party. Missouri. Uh, Romney may have reason to worry because Gingrich isn't on the, on the ballot, ballot right. so, so the, there may one. be the, yeah, exactly. Okay, okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you, James. Thanks. Appreciate it.